99% of your creation is complete before you begin to see the evidence. In other words, you've lived life, you've launched rockets, source has received your rocket, law of attraction has acted on your rocket, actualization is beginning to form around your rocket of desire, but there's no physical evidence yet. So if you are counting on the physical evidence before you cheer up, then you have a sort of gap, don't you? Physical friends will say, well, Abraham, if I could be over there, I would feel so much better. And we say, we know, but you've got to feel better before you can get over there. And they say, well, can't I just be the one exception in all of the universe? Can't you just make it better? Can't you change the circumstance so that I can feel better? And we say, it's an inside job. You've got to find a way to shift your vibration. And then whatever it is you've been asking for can flow easily into your experience. So now, here's the most important part of all of this and really a sort of leading edge place for many of you. For most of you are not aware of this. And as you hear it, and think about it, and play with it over the next few days, so many things are going to fall into place for you. So many things that you have been holding yourself apart from for no good reason will begin to flow into your experience. In fact, an avalanche of stuff you've been wanting is lined up right outside your door. And when you open the door a crack, all kinds of things will begin flowing in. We are visiting with a woman recently who was experiencing, even in the moment that we were talking with her, very much pain in her hips. She has arthritis. And she said the pain was nearly constant. It varied in degree, but it was severe. And we said to her, you know, there are two journeys that you are living concurrently at all times. There's the journey that is already manifested that you're observing and talking about. In other words, there's the stuff that is manifested that you call reality. We call it reality. <laughs> but you call it reality. <laughs> it's more important to you than it is to us because we know how temporary it is. We know how changeable it is. We know that it's only the platform from which you launch more rockets of desire. And we know that your now reality is the time in which you adjust your vibration in order to open the door more than a crack to allow more of what you are wanting in. So we don't want to give reality as much attention as you do. We want to call it Reality. Temporary reality. So we said to this woman, you have two journeys that are running concurrently. You've got the reality or your awareness of what has manifested. But then you have this emotional reality. You have this vibrational reality. You have an opportunity on your emotional journey to adjust your vibration. You can't do much about the reality that is manifested. Some of you say, Abraham, I've jumped out of an airplane. I'm at 40,000 feet. I have no parachute. What should I do? And we say, hold on, it will be over soon. <laughs> because sometimes if you wait until the very last minute to begin adjusting your vibration, there is a momentum factor involved that you sort of have to live out. But we're wanting to talk to you pre-manifestation. We're wanting to talk to you about what you're doing with your vibration now. And so we want to call your attention to this emotional journey that you're always upon. So as we were talking to our friend with arthritic hips in great pain, we said, you could be a person who has arthritis in your hips and pain who is fearful, or you could be a woman who has arthritis in her hips and pain and hopeful. And the vibrational difference between being fearful and hopeful is a huge vibrational difference. Now, as any moment in time is not, it's not a big enough vibrational difference to give you instant manifestation. Nothing is. And friends, trust us on this. You're glad that you don't have instant manifestation. This buffer of time is really your friend. It's your opportunity to observe and to ponder and to visualize and to remember. It's your opportunity to take an emotional journey that might be different from what you're actually observing. People say to us, Abraham, how can I be living this uncomfortable situation of not enough money or my lover has left me or my body is broken? And 
find a vibration that will change it. And we say, there are a lot of ways to do that. You just have to understand that that is your work. You cannot continue to offer the same vibration and have anything change in your experience. And the reason that most people do not offer a different vibration is because they are so enamored with what is reality. Do you know that the majority of the vibration that the majority of people offer is offered in response to what they are observing? When you have the ability to imagine, you have the ability to remember, you have so many options other than looking at what is, and this is the part that we really want you to hear today. Even if you're standing in the midst of a reality, you have the ability to look at it in a way that makes you feel fear or to look at it in a way that makes you feel hope. And so that's why we are referring to the emotional journey. It's the emotional journey up the emotional meter. And when you understand that the way you feel is the key to this, now you're on your way. Thinking your way through it is harder because do you know how magnetic thoughts are? So if something's been happening and you've been observing it and you've been talking about it, you've activated that vibration within you. Whatever you give your attention to, you activate within your vibration. We want you to make friends with your vibration wherever it is. In other words, we want you to understand the vibrational nature of whatever it is that you've been thinking about and understand that it is illogical, it cannot be done, it defies the laws of physics for you to be offering a vibration of despair and all of a sudden jump over to a vibration of appreciation. Those vibrational frequencies are too far apart. You can't set your radio dial on 6.30 a.m. and hear what's being broadcast on 98.7. 6 FM, the frequencies have to match up. And so when you've been focusing upon something that is causing you to feel the emotion that is evidence of the vibration of despair or fear, you don't have access to those thoughts that feel like appreciation, not in that moment. Joseph Campbell gave you some wonderful words. He said, follow your bliss. And we have never heard words spoken that are more accurate to what we know about your guidance system and who you are and what you deserve and what you're worthy of, and if you could do it, would lead you to the fulfillment of your reason for being here and for a joyful life every day, all day. Following your bliss, that is very good advice. But when you are in despair, you cannot get a whiff of bliss because the vibrational frequencies are too far apart. And when someone suggests that you are wrong not to be reaching and finding bliss, or appreciation, or love, when you are in your place of strong negative emotion, we want you to understand that it's not practical to make that kind of quantum leap jump. But it is practical for you to move from despair to anger. If you decide that nothing is more important than the way you feel, all of this gets very easy because trying to process the thoughts that you are thinking is a bit cumbersome. Because when you are thinking about what you're thinking, you've activated what you're thinking. And when you've activated what you're thinking, then other thoughts like that which you are thinking come into your mind. And now you've got a more activated thought of that which you were thinking. And then you say, I'm not going to think this thought that I'm thinking because I'm thinking that this thought that I'm thinking is not the best thought that I could be thinking. But you're still thinking that thought that you're thinking. Where if you are reaching for a feeling rather than for a thought, it's easier for you to move up the emotional scale. We'll talk about this a lot today if you're wanting, and we'll show you how, no matter where you are, that there is a place for improvement. And we want you to realize and watch and feel as we move through this day that the feeling of moving up the emotional scale or the feeling of moving from resistance into allowing, or the feeling of shifting your vibration from one that is disallowing your connection to who you are to one that is fully allowing your connection to who you are. This process of moving up the emotional scale is a step-by-step -step process. It's something that you have to feel your way to. We are eager to talk with you about anything that is important to you. Nothing is off limits here. All questions are appropriate. You will notice a comfortable unfolding. In other words, sometimes a question that would lay a good basis for your question is better to come before your question than after your question. And since this gathering actually happened before your physical bodies got here, in other words, the intent of that which you're about, the things that you're wondering about and thinking about, we've all been rehearsing in the wings before you got here, and so we're ready for you.